I decided to split what to sow and grow in June into two videos otherwise it would have been far too long so this video is going to cover weeks three and four you might have been growing some broad beans quite early in the year or you could have planted some at the end of last year because they'll grow through winter albeit slow you can plant those out in autumn and they'll be quite dormant through winter months but then they'll spring into life already having an established root system and the plants will soon shoot up you should be at a point now if you've done that where you can start and harvest the pods from your broad beans but once again maybe because of the weather we've had it might be a little bit farer behind this year but give those a check and if you've got any decent sized pods on you can start taking harvest from those plants and also keep the eye out for black fly and you'll mainly see those around the tops of your plants so if your plants have reached a mature size and they started to grow pods or they've got lots of flowers on pinch the tops off your broad beans because that will help with that black fly problem at the same time you might have planted some early brassicas we've got a greenhouse and we've put quite a lot of red cabbages in it and we also had cauliflowers in another one but they didn't do quite so well they split open before they reached a nice sized head to harvest but the red cabbages have been in since last autumn and they're doing really well they're now starting to form ahead but you might have had more success than me with cauliflowers and if you have you should be in a position now where those winter planted cauliflowers should now be getting ready for harvest so it might be worth taking a look at those and still on subject to brassicas you've probably sown seeds to grow kale that's another thing that we haven't bothered with this year and it grows quite fast and there's only two of us so we decided to leave kale out this season anyway but a lot of people do grow kale because it is really good for you and now's the time to get those planted outside just be aware as with all brassicas the cabbage white's going to be around and they'll land on your kale just like any other brassica lay eggs and then you're going to have caterpillars destroying the leaves before you even get to harvest any so make sure you've got a net on those plants and also make sure the net is not touching the tops of those plants or the outer leaves because butterflies will lay eggs through that net onto your leaves and you'll still have the same problem although you're less likely to know it's actually happening make some kind of a structure cover all your brassicas up with netting or use oop tunnels like we do we get the piping from screw fix that's the cheapest place i could find and the netting is called scaffolding or debris netting and we got that from ebay so maybe this year you might want to build yourself some oop tunnels just to put some of your brassicas in to offer that protection from cabbage white and now because we're in the third week of june it's time to get those pepper plants put in the final place and that's because your peppers need a very long growing season so they can flower and fruit and get your peppers of any size so if you've hardened your peppers off which you should have done by now because that was last week's job then they should be ready to go out in the final position whether they're going to be in ground or in containers that's up to you where you plant them we've put ours in containers for the moment and they're doing all right we're starting to get some nice little side shoots coming on these plants now so they're going to grow bigger these are only two litre pots but we tend to move them into 10 litres mid-season just to give them that boost of growth and more room for those roots and as with your tomato plants these do a lot better in the UK in a greenhouse because we get really bad winds winds drop the temperature they cause wind burn and all sorts of problems so once they're in a container or in ground in your greenhouse they do tend to thrive June onwards but keep your eye out for aphids you'll find them mainly under your leaves but you'll also see them in the centres of the tops of your plants and a dead giveaway for aphids if you see ants running up and down stems of your plants it's a good indication that those plants have got aphids on them somewhere because the ants are there to protect the aphids aphids drain the sap out of the leaves of your plants which causes them to yellow and eventually die but they don't keep everything that they extract from those leaves they leave a little bit of what's called honeydew behind 
and the ants feed on that. So if you see ants anywhere on your pepper plants especially, they're probably there guarding these aphids because the aphids are feeding them. So anything that goes on there to attack aphids, the ants will attack while waiting for that little reward in case you never saw that before. Anyway, get them planted out, get them put in your containers, and make sure you feed them every 14 days. Along with your swedes, you might have planted turnips as well. But your turnips will have been planted that bit earlier. So depending on the variety that you planted and the time that you planted them at, some of those should now be ready for harvest. So go and have a check at those, because they're a little bit smaller than a swede. If you've got any growing outside, pop down, take a look. And if you want to take a couple of harvests, the small ones and let the rest grow a bit bigger you can do that because as we keep mentioning during this video the weather has been a bit up and down for the last few months so things might be a little bit far behind but it doesn't mean that you can't take small harvests and that's week three done so we'll move on now to week four and don't worry it's not a huge list as you approach week four of june any carrots that you planted out quite early that you've been watching that you might have took a couple of harvests from already should now be at a point where they're all coming ready and that's your early varieties that you sown way back so you're in a position now where you should be able to take harvests or all your carrots every few days if that's what you want to do or leave them to grow on a bit bigger so keep your eye out for that as well because as soon as you harvest these early planted vegetables that leaves room to sow something else ready to grow through summer. If you're growing your carrots in containers, make sure you've got those containers at least 60 centimetres off the ground because carrot root fly can't fly that high. So if they're raised up, they're protected from that pest at least. There's not much you can do apart from the ones that's outside in ground unless you've used seeds like resistor fly. But if you haven't, very fine netting to cover those plants is pretty much all you can do. And we've got a few containers in garden, as you've probably already seen. And I think we might have some to take little harvests from. It depends whether you're happy with baby carrots or you want nice big ones. And then we're back onto these again. It eventually comes full circle when you're planting out your brassicas in winter, ready for that spring harvest, which for everybody has probably come a little bit later than normal. But as we're doing that, we should have been growing more seedlings. These are cauliflowers that were transplanted into these cells about a month ago and they've not put on a bad size now but because we're taking harvest from these brassicas outside we're going to be leaving space there to grow something else so you should have grown some more cauliflowers or cabbage depending on what you want and now's the time to get those in ground and get them growing ready for an autumn harvest so if you haven't got any at the moment you still got time to grow some seedlings and get them in and maybe take a later harvest of those particular vegetables but again also be aware that when you've got them in packs like this butterflies will lay eggs even on plants that size i've seen them do it in the past loads of times with plants i've had outside on benches so we've got a table outside this year which you might have seen in a previous video where we've put a net over the top so everything we put in there is protected from that problem and pigeons so if you haven't got any plants done already, don't worry, you can sow some seeds, grow some little plants, get them put out and either grow them in ground or grow them in containers. But as we mentioned previously with the kale, you're going to have to keep these netted. Because cabbage whites can be around until October. But if you've got an oop tunnel, you're already set up, put your little plants in and they should be perfectly fine on their own. And if you're growing things like cucumbers as well, by the end of June, they should be getting to be a quite a big size. So you can start and prune leaves off those, any bottom leaves especially, because they'll be quite big. Some are gonna start and turn yellow and those leaves aren't gonna do anything anyway. So keep your eye on those plants as well and just take off those leaves where necessary. While at the same time, you're getting better aeration below that plant and you're not splashing the bottom leaves with water because you've took them away, which is something we'll be doing a bit later in season when it comes to us tomatoes but that'll be another video apart from everything else that we've mentioned keep up with the feeding of your plants and that includes all your potato plants especially things that you've got in containers 
because the nutrients leach out of your containers a lot quicker. So you need to feed your plants every 10 to 14 days. So that includes all your tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, squash plants, your containers with your potatoes in. Make sure you keep up that feeding process because it's only one little capful of tomato feed or liquid seaweed every two weeks. And that's going to make your plants grow a lot healthier and produce better fruits and give you a better harvest. And that's it. So that's June weeks one to four pretty much covered. So hopefully all the information that's been put together in these videos is going to be of some use to people as we go through these next four weeks. But of course there's always other things to do and if you want to see what they are please hit that subscribe button press that notifications bell and we'll see you next time take care